Morning you guys, it's Karen and I'm here to talk about which skincare items we should use together or try to use separately. Um, and this came about because on a, a video, I think it may have been my DCM haul video, um, I mentioned that you it was recommended not to use niacinamide with vitamin C. Um, and I was referring to my DCM, the ordinary niacinamide and the, the purest form of vitamin C. Um, and it's a recommendation on the Victoria Health website and by um, the ordinary but I had quite a few questions from that and asking is it just if you use it with the purest form of vitamin C um, and is there anything else you shouldn't mix together and so I'm talking about the things that are talked about as as they shouldn't be mixed together and with what I think on the subject. Please remember I'm not a qualified skincare specialist in any way shape or form. Um, my experience with and knowledge with skincare is purely self-taught. Um, my ex experience with ingredients is more over on the medical side and I am thinking of doing a video just telling you guys what my medical background is and what my job in the hospital was so that you can maybe understand more um, about where my knowledge comes from and my qualifications etc because that's something else I get asked questions about. Um, but I'm not qualified in skincare at all. I've just sort of self-taught from my knowledge of ingredients. So in order to do this video, I made sure I had a look what the most current research was and the most current thinking. And there's, there's one combination particularly where there is a lot of opinion from Paula's Choice and then there is a counteracting article by a scientist and I can actually see how, how both sides kind of makes sense so it's very very complex. Um, anyway today I'm talking about vitamin C, retinol, acids such as AHA and BHA, um, niacinamide of course and benzoyl peroxide um, which I know some people use and that's something that has some theories around whether you should mix it or not. Okay the first one to talk about is vitamin C and retinol so I've got here the vitamin C from the ordinary and the retinol 1% from the ordinary but this applies to pretty much any vitamin C and any retinol or retinoid can you use them together. The theory is firstly that there's a lot of irritation or there can be irritation from both products so you shouldn't combine them um, and the bigger kind of controversial discussion is on the pH levels. Um, I believe that the vitamin C needs to be formulated at a pH of 3.5 whereas the retinol is more 5.56 which is more your skin's usual pH and so using the two together um, affects things. There is some, I think Paula's Choice believes that you should use them together, that using something with a pH of 3.5 whether it be vitamin C or acids on your skin first and then using retinol is beneficial. Um, there is a scientist who is actually a supporter of Paula's but has um, done an article talking about how she's wrong in that and I have to say I read both articles, both opinions and I can pull things out of both that, that seem to make sense but obviously I'm not the expert here um, but what I make of it is that they're both kind of right that basically retinol will work if you use it with vitamin C but not to the best of its ability that it will work better and it will um, there'll be a better conversion to retinoic acid if you use it at the appropriate pH. That's what I have um, taken from it and that's how I'd like to go forward. So I would like to use these two separately. So I'd like to use my vitamin C at a separate time to using retinol. And actually that's the tricky part is trying to get a regime that doesn't combine the things that you don't want to combine especially with self-tan involved, which is a whole nother story. If you really do want to combine your vitamin C and retinol, perhaps you want to use both of these at night, because I know some people want to use vitamin C at night, um, and that's something I am gonna talk about as well in this video, then I would suggest perhaps getting um, the, a derivative of vitamin C. So on the Victoria Health website, the DCM, the ordinary skincare company, do do two vitamin C derivative products um, so I'll try and remember and link those for you so you know which ones they are um, because I don't believe they say vitamin C in the title so they're not the ascorbic acid form um, but you could use those that, that's not considered to have as much of an issue with the pH um, and the other thing you could do is use them on separate nights um, but again that might be against what you want to do if you want to use vitamin C every day. The H aside, the other reason they say you shouldn't combine um, vitamin C and retinol is to do with the irritation and so let me just touch on that. If you have 
If you are buying your vitamin C from Desiem, The Ordinary, this form here, and uh, the vitamin C 23%, or any other vitamin C really, but I haven't found any irritation with any others except for The Ordinary one, be very careful, I would say, about mixing your vitamin C with anything. I would say try this and nothing else, maybe your SPF on top of it, or a night cream or an oil, but nothing else, to see if you get any irritation, because if you don't know and you just buy the vitamin C and then use it with your retinol, you are likely to end up with red, itchy, scaly skin, and obviously that's not what any of us want, so do be wary of that. So um, for me, certainly, this has caused some tingling and irritation, which does die down with time. That is something they tell you can happen at the beginning, but you don't want to combine it and make things worse. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about vitamin C and acids and vitamin C and benzoyl peroxide, but let's talk about vitamin C and whether you should use it in the day or the evening, um, just to cover that, because I know there's a lot of talk out there about people using it in the evening. And it's always been thought that the best time to use it is during the day underneath your SPF. So there's a couple of reasons um, why people have switched to using it in the evening. There is some evidence that, um, in fact, a lot of evidence, although no specific clinical trials, but there is evidence that the UV in the day damages the antioxidant properties of vitamin C, which is why I think it's probably the main reason why people have started using it at night, um, because then it has the whole of the night for its antioxidant properties to work on your skin undisturbed by any UV, any daylight. Um, something else to note is that your skin does store up um, the antioxidant properties that help protect from the UV rays. So by putting it on at night, you are still protecting yourself during the day because it will work through the night, store up and last through the following day. So it doesn't have to be put on in the morning before your SPF. Something else to note is that the you, the damage you get during the day from the UV rays is something that continues on after you are out of the sun. So that will continue through the night as well. And if you think about it, it makes sense because I know certainly for myself, I could be out in the sun, well, I can be out in the sun all day, but I could be out in the sun for X amount of time and think that I've done no damage and you're probably the same and then later that evening you suddenly go oh my god I'm bright red you know it doesn't come out immediately it takes a while and so the UV damage continues so it does kind of make sense to put it on at night um, when the damage is really taking effect and also for it to store up overnight to protect you the following day so um, it does make sense to me that I would prefer to put it on in the evening now instead of in the daytime to just avoid anything in the daylight breaking down any of the antioxidant properties. Okay, back to vitamin C and what you can mix it with. So we talked about retinol, next would be acids. So vitamin C and AHAs, BHAs, which is your glycolic acid, salicylic acid, acid, lactic acid, etc. I'm currently using, do I have it here? Yes, I do, the 10% lactic acid. The theory with this is simply about irritation and it's the same thing as I mentioned before with vitamin C, particularly this one from The Ordinary. A lot of people have found um, their skin to be irritated and irritation can occur with any of the acids depending on your type, your skin type, your skin age, your skin sensitivity. Um, and so I would say if you are using one or the other and, and trying one, adding one in, just use the new one on its own to see if you have any irritation. For me, I'm happy to combine these because this, although this vitamin C causes me irritation, it's not actually the one I'm using at the moment. I'm using my Skin Deva one. In fact, I might be using my Holly Berry one that I got from Amazon, and then I'm gonna use my Skin Deva one and then maybe use this. Um, but I would, I'm happy to combine them because I know that I have no irritation to the vitamin C's I'm using. Um, and so I then add in my acids. But if I was using this vitamin C, I would use it on a different day to my acids simply because I do get irritation from this. And until that irritation died down, I wouldn't just irritate the skin more. When I say irritate, I'm not getting any irritation from this, but I am getting dry skin. And so I'm making my skin more vulnerable by, you know, sl sloughing off the top layer, um, the dead skin. And so that might make this irritate my skin more. So I definitely separate them. The final combination with vitamin C is benzoyl peroxide. So that will be something you would use for um, acne. It's something actually that we don't have on 
sale here anymore in the UK. I believe we can't buy it. I don't know whether you can get it on prescription um, or, or maybe it has come out again with a new percentage or some new laws or something, but I know it was taken off the shelves because I used something called Quinoderm for um, a long time when I had really bad breakouts on my skin and found it was really effective. Um, anyway, benzoyl peroxide and vitamin C. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. Benzoyl peroxide peroxide is a pro-oxidant so it would make sense to me to not combine them. Um, I haven't drilled down into the science of this, um, I've just looked at a few um, articles and it has made sense to me that combining vitamin C and benzoyl peroxide isn't a good idea because they have different purposes and they have the complete opposite purpose on the skin so I would say use them on separate days if you can. Okay let's talk about retinol and which products you should and shouldn't combine it with. So the first one is acids that I'm going to talk about so that would be combining my retinol with my lactic acid. Um, this is basically the same issue as combining retinol with vitamin C. Um, a different pH pH is required for um, the formulations and for them to work at their best um, and also the issue of irritation. So it really is everything I said about vitamin C and retinol. I would use these on different days. I, th I think personally you will get the best use of your vitamin C if you use it on a day where you're not using something with a low pH such as acids or vitamin C. Um, and the other thing is the irritation. Retinol can cause irritation. Lactic acid or any of the acids, the AHAs, etc., can cause irritation. And so you don't want to use it as a double whammy. If you don't care about the, the pH part of the argument um, and you want to use them together, just again, use them separately to make sure you have no irritation or you know what your level of irritation is before you combine them. One of the arguments is that they're both exfoliating, um, but retinol is not an exfoliant. Um, the acids are an exfoliant, but retinol works in a completely different way. Um, so it isn't, you're not putting two exfoliants on your skin. Next is retinol with benzoyl peroxide. I don't have any benzoyl peroxide to show you, um, but the theory with that is that they both cause skin cell turnover, which they do, and they can both cause peeling, um, which I have experienced with both products, and therefore it's too much for the skin. And I would agree because I think if you're using benzoyl peroxide, um, to me, one of the biggest mistakes I made when I had really bad outbreaks and really bad oily skin was putting too much on it to try and dry it out. What I now know is that I was causing my skin to be too dry and therefore it produced more oil to counteract the dryness. Um, and I think that that's definitely, it's sometimes it's just out of desperation. You want to throw everything at your skin that may help it. And they're both things, both retinol and benzoyl peroxide are things that may help with breakouts. But if you put them both on at the same time, I think it's just overloading the skin. If you want to use them both, um, I mean, I don't think retinol is something that everybody can use every day anyway, um, but I would say use them again on different days. So retinol one day, benzoyl peroxide the other. The other um, acids I use, it's the Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% BHA liquid. Uh, I've got this in the liquid, the gel and the lotion. My favorite is the lotion. Um, I don't like the gel at all. And I, I do quite like this, but it sometimes makes my eyes water the following day. Um, anyway, the final product to talk about is niacinamide, and I'm gonna talk about should you mix it with vitamin C, and should you mix it with your acid, so lactic acid, etc. cetera. Um, and this is a really interesting one, and I've got a kind of funny story to tell you surrounding the, the theory around these. Um, so the theory with niacinamide and acids are that because of the pH difference, because again, niacinamide is, I believe, required to be formulated about a 5.5. I'm not 100% sure of, of that, but I know that it's not 3.54, it's not that low. Um, and so the theory is again about the pH differences. Um, but it, some people believe that it could cause um, the production of nicotinic acid. And nicotinic acid will, it's a form of B6 and it will, give you a flush and so that in itself I don't find to be an issue um, I suppose if you didn't know what was happening it might be a bit frightening if your face suddenly went bright red you might think you were having an allergy to something um, and like I said if you weren't aware of it you might think oh my god you know I'm allergic to this it shouldn't feel red or sore, it may feel itchy, but it would just be a, a red face. That was That's what would happen. And so the story I have to tell you about this is to do with myself and Kev. And I have been into nutrition and skincare and medical 
things and anything to do with any of those subjects. I have had books after book after book after book over the years. I've had bookshelves full of books. I always got books for my birthdays and Christmas and read everything into them. And one of the ones I was reading was about digestion, I think, um, and about it was figuring out what type of food your body needed. I can't remember the full details or even the book. I might try and look it up and see about this test and do it again. Um, and the way that it said to test it was you went to buy um, niacin, which obviously this is niacinamide, you went to buy niacin and you could buy niacin no flush, but I didn't really know that you could buy niacin no flush at the time. And so I just bought the, the straight up niacin and you were to take, I think 50 milligrams of this and you were to wait a few hours. Um, there was something to do with digestion, which I can't remember how it measured it. But the other thing was to see I think how much of a flush you got or something like that. I can't remember the outcomes. Anyway, I took this 50 milligram niacin and I persuaded my husband to take it as well. And I said to him, we may go a little bit red and you may get a little bit of itching. That's what it described it as. You may itch a little bit, you may go red. Well, within 10 minutes of taking this tablet, we were both bright red, beetroot red from head to toe. I thought it was hilarious, my husband not so much. I think because I knew that it wasn't, it wasn't anything that was going to harm us. It wasn't anything awful and it wasn't sore. It was literally, we were just hot and itchy. Both of us were scratching all over. I remember we ended up going to bed or not even, I remember just lying on top of the bed and I was laughing and Kev was like, this is not funny. Is this normal? Are you sure this is normal? Because honestly, we were crimson, both of us. Um, and he was like, how long is it going to take to wear off? And I didn't know. I mean, we didn't, I don't think I had internet in that house. Um, and I think it wore off in about an hour. It took about an hour before it went away. Um, and he was just like, that's it. That's the last time I trust you giving me anything. And, you know, he just wasn't amused. And I, like I said, thought it was hilarious. It's not something that is bad for you at all. Actually, that's quite good, bringing blood to the surface. Um, and since then, when I had my breakouts, one of the things I would do is to take a niacin, not a no flush one. So take one that was a flush one, but I would cut it up into about eight pieces so the effect wasn't as severe. And I would take one every few hours um, and that helps with breakouts. I thought that might be amusing. Maybe you had to be there. Um, but that's what the concern is with this, that it will cause this facial flush. So even if it does, I don't think that's anything to worry about personally. Um, with the pH, again, I would say that to me, for something to work optimally, it would it would work best at the appropriate pH. So for that reason, I would try if possible to not mix them. Um, the final thing is there is some very weak, limited research that says the combination of acids and niacinamide could cause the production of hydrogen peroxide. Um, I don't honestly know what the outcome would be of having hydrogen peroxide on your skin. Um, I wouldn't imagine it was good, it would burn it, but there's such weak research um, that I wouldn't give it too much credence. But the only thing I'd say about that is you do sometimes find that that there's no smoke without fire, you know, that something is said. And it's either a rumour, like with parabens, you know, there was a rumour started and, and there can be something where everybody takes it on board and, and then it grows arms and legs, or there is something in it and it is later found to be genuine. Um, so I don't know about that, but because of that, plus the fact that I think I'd prefer to use them, you know, different... I'd prefer to pay attention to the pH levels, um, then I would suggest using them separately if you can work that into your regime. But I don't think there's a huge risk of combining them. And the final combination is niacinamide and vitamin C, which is where this all started, um, where as per the website, it recommends if you are using niacinamide to use it at a different time to vitamin C. So one in the morning, one in the evening. Um, the risk with it, um, they don't actually say, they say something about it not the vitamin C can't work to its full potential or something like that. Um, and there is also a risk of facial flushing as talked about with the, the niacinamide and acids, it could cause facial flushing. So I don't think that that's a risk, but as I've said throughout, I think because the, they are different pHs, I would prefer to use them, um, to use products together that are a similar pH to give it the best chance of working um, to its maximum capacity. Um, but that's just my, my take on what's out there. Um, 
I don't think there's any, I don't think it will prevent either of them working. They will still both work. The worst thing that could happen is you get a red face. There's no, um, there's nothing more sinister than that. It's, it's really down to personal choice. But I would say they would work better if using them separately. Or again, if you use a vitamin C derivative as opposed to the ascorbic acid. Um, I think that's something maybe to consider. If, if you can't work out your regime the way that you want it, not combining things then think about using a derivative because the derivatives are still converted to ascorbic acid in the skin actually again with vitamin c derivatives there is some some of the derivatives have data showing that they convert to ascorbic acid on the skin and others don't have enough research data it's always about how much data is out there um I mean, I suppose I could do a whole video perhaps on vitamin C and derivatives, if you like. Um, and there may be some repetition in that saying what not to use it with um, and talk about the different forms. Let me know if that interests you. So I thought what might be interesting or useful to you is if I if I tell you how I'm putting my regime together at the moment, um, because it's quite complicated to work it all out, isn't it? So I'm putting nothing on in the morning except for SPF. Um, the reason for that is I believe if there's evidence out there showing that um, the antioxidant properties of skincare degrade, then I don't wanna put vitamin C on in the morning. I don't wanna put niacinamide on in the morning. And most of the other products I want to use combine with those and I wouldn't, for example, I think I could put retinol on in the morning, but I want to be putting my niacinamide on with my retinol because they are a similar pH. I don't want to put niacinamide on in the morning because it will degrade during the day, um, or I, I think it may. So the way I'm doing it is just SPF during the day, and I think that that is best. Um, that's certainly what I think sits well with me at the moment. In the evening, it means that I'm gonna be loading my skin up with skincare, but I'm going to have to sacrifice using something daily. So I am going to use vitamin C every other day and niacinamide every other day, so that I can use them, allow them to be, to do their best work, um, but not combine them. This is where it's down to personal choice, because you could almost say, well, if you use vitamin C and say niacinamide together, um, they won't be as beneficial, but perhaps it's more beneficial to use them together every day rather than using one one night and one the other night. There's so many different ways you could do this. So on night number one, I am starting off, cleanse my face, use my toner, which is just my cellar water, and then I will use my 2% BHA from Paula's Choice, or I'll use my lactic acid from Desiem, and I then follow that with my vitamin C. Um, after that, I will use an oil because I'm using, you know, acids that are going to exfoliate, etc. I want to use something that's really going to put the moisture back in my skin. Depending on how my skin's feeling, that will sometimes be accompanied by a moisturizer or not. Um, and then on night number two, I will use my niacinamide, so still the same cleanse tone, etc. niacinamide, and then I will use my retinol 1% followed again by an oil or a moisturizer, depending on how my skin is feeling. I don't want to use retinol every other night necessarily at the moment, so some nights I will just miss that out and just use my niacinamide. Um, other ways you could do it is you could put your vitamin C on one day in the morning and then on the second day use it in the evening so that you're using it every day if that's important to you. Like I said, it's just about what's important to you. Is it important to you to use ascorbic acid form of vitamin C because it has the most research data that it penetrates, that it can, well, it doesn't need to convert because it is ascorbic acid, um, or is it most important to you to be able to combine all of your ingredients in one? Is it most important to you to use vitamin C every day? Find out what's important to you and then work out a way you can do I'm it. really into my skincare at the moment and loving doing research on it as well. Um, and, and I've really gone away from buying serums from boots I suppose or the drugstore in general you know I did used to love my Olay serums etc but it does make sense to me to be buying a more pure form of the ingredients that you want rather than something that has that as one of the the ingredients you know and especially because the Desiem products are such a good price um, I have ordered the is it called oreganine or arginine 
which is supposedly this Botox in a bottle, um, but obviously it's not out yet. I will definitely review that for you. And I'm looking at interest with the research on that. So I'll come to you and tell you what the research is and what my opinion is on that. And obviously how it feels on the skin, etc. That's everything. I always love to hear your opinions on the whole Desiem skincare um, and, and what, how you're finding things because I think people are having very different experiences with it. So that's really interesting. And also if you have any comments or questions about combining things, then feel free to leave it in the comments below. Um, I will list everything I've got on my face in the description and I'll speak to you again soon.